Hello, yogis. We're going to do a slow and low practice today, all on the ground. All you need is a blanket. You can lay it down over your mat if you like extra padding. Or if you have carpeted floors, you could just roll on your carpet. Please come to lie on your back. And when I start almost all of my classes lying down, and there's no need to like go right to Shavasana, if that's not comfortable on your lower back, you can always work with bent knees. You could take your feet wide with your knees together. You could even take your feet together with your knees wide in the Baddha Konasana. So just make yourself comfortable here to start. Rest your hands on your belly, your low rib area, and just take a moment to start to breathe with intention. Make a nice soft setting for your forehead, for your jaw. You might unglue your tongue from the roof of the mouth and let it settle in the base of the mouth. Take another breath or two. And then bend your knees if they're not already bent. Step your feet to hip distance and interlace your hands behind your head. So we're gonna warm up the spine in this practice. So we'll do several spinal movements some hip work. Let's get right into the spine here to start. So spread your elbows wide, tip your pelvis forward and arch your lower spine up off the floor. Take a big full inhale breath. As you exhale, you're gonna lift your head up, draw your elbows in and round your upper back. Squeeze your elbows together. And spread your shoulder blades wide. Inhale, lower down. Arch pelvis forward again, spread your elbows wide. Exhale, pick up, round your head in, curl your elbows in. So it's a cat cow pose on your back. I invite you to move with your own breath rhythm. So really not rushing, definitely not forcing. One of the beauties of being down on the ground Working with gravity is, it allows us to work out of the typical, you know, everything is muscularized, everything is strong, action. Here we can, we can get a little bit softer, really allow for experiencing and sensation on a much more subtle level. Next time you lift up, sweep your left elbow towards your outer right knee, twist to the right. Inhale, lower down as before, spread the elbows wide, arch your pelvis forward, and then exhale and come up and twist to the left. We'll twist side to side several times, and you can slightly vary the angle of rotation each time you twist to address a different part of the low back, upper back, neck. It can really be exploratory. You might even do a straight up side bend rather than twisting. You could sweep your left elbow towards your outer left hip and your right elbow towards the back of your mat. There's no right or wrong way to do this.
After you've gone three times each way, take one more lift right in the center. And then release your head. Take your arms down. Take a couple of breaths, pause in the center. And then heel toe your feet out as wide as your mat. Take your arms out wide. If you don't have the space to go wide, you could bend at the elbows and take the cactus shape. Inhale in the center. Exhale, keep the feet wide, sweep your knees over to the left. Come onto the inner right foot, the outer left foot. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, knees go to the right. Okay, again, move at your own pace. I like really active feet, toes, ankles. That feels best on my knees and my pelvis. So you might, you might test that out. Really sharpen the inner and the outer edge of your foot into the floor. Spread your toes. It may sort of naturally occur, be already be occurring, but take your head in the opposite direction of your knees. So gaze out at your hand. Bring that rotation up into the head and the neck. Just as the previous pose, we're not forcing, we're not rushing. It's really, it's a really beautiful chance to explore fluidity and grace. If you've never done dance or any of the graceful arts, here's your chance to embody that. And through that, through that fluidity, through that grace, in the physical body, we can bring that into the into the more subtle realms of the body. So graceful, fluid movements can lead to a graceful, fluid nervous system. A couple more times each way. When you're even on both sides, return back to the center. You can keep your feet wide, let your knees knock together and breathe here. I like to, to come back to the center, especially between asymmetrical uh, poses and it's like a, a brief time to reset and also to absorb, to assimilate that movement into your body. Let's roll over to the left side. And you're gonna slide your left hand under your head and interlace your right hand to your left hand. So you've got both hands behind your head. Rest your head in your left arm and curl your elbows in and then pull your knees up pretty close. So you're in a sideline, like fetal position. So the previous movement we twisted by moving the legs. Now we twist by moving the torso. Next time you inhale, sweep your right elbow up toward the ceiling. Roll back to your back. Your head will come to the floor. Stretch your right elbow down to or toward the floor. And then exhale, sweep left elbow, your right elbow, excuse me, back to the left, rest your head in your left arm. Inhale, keep the right arm up. Your head will come to the floor. Your right elbow stretches back to the right, twist open, and then return to the left. So you can, you can keep going, moving with your breath. It can be the inhale to do the open, opening action, the exhale to return to the side. Or you may be inclined to pause and breathe for one, two, three, four breaths in the twisting portion or, or in the resting portion. 
you can play this out in the way that's best for you. Ten more seconds or so. And then when you're back on your left side, we're going to stay on the left, but we're going to stretch the legs out long and come up to your left forearm elbow. So I have my elbow right underneath my shoulder. And I have my heels in line with my hips. So it's a sideline Tadasana pose. You can have your right hand on your thigh or you could take it out in front of you if you feel like you need a little bit of balance. Push your left elbow down. Lengthen the left side waist and rib cage. And then you're going to pick your right leg up. Rotate your right toes up toward the ceiling and then bend your right knee into the tree shape. Grab a hold of your right ankle and slide your right foot up in the tree pose. I like to keep my hand there. Push your right arm a little bit back against your thigh. Keep that nice long length in the left side waist. Keep your right leg in the tree pose. Slide your left arm now down to rest your head in your left arm. And take your right ankle in your right hand and set your right foot in front of you, right foot on the floor like the pigeon shape. Here you definitely want to keep a hold of your ankle or you'll slip slide away. Push down through your right heel. Open up through that right hip. You can roll your right outer hip away from you like you would in a normal pigeon pose. Then sweep your right leg back, catch the top of your foot or ankle, and pull your right heel to your right sitting bone. Now it's a little wobbly with the left leg extended, so if you're wobbling too much, pull your left knee out in front of you. Squeeze your right heel to your right sitting bone, Roll your right shoulder back and slide your right knee back. Open up the front of your hip and your thigh. Find your breath. Okay, let's release. Right leg meets the left. And then you'll just roll through your back and all the way over to your other side. I'm gonna get up and flip around so I'm still facing you. We start with the right hand under the head. Knees pull up close to you, interlace your fingers, rest your head in your right arm and pause. Find your breath. And with your next inhale, sweep your left elbow up toward the ceiling, roll back, Towards your back, reach your left elbow to slash toward the floor, twist open. And then sweep back to the right, rest your head in your right arm and pause. You can inhale to do the movement. Inhale, sweep the left elbow up, roll open to the twist. And then maybe you stay for an extra breath or maybe you exhale to sweep back to the right side. It's your show to do this as you will and as most appropriate for you and your body. We have an eye towards, towards fluidity, towards gracefulness, and also an eye toward curiosity. How does this side differ from the first side? Where is their sensation happening? Where does the sensation originate?
last 10 seconds. When you land back on your right side, then we sweep up right elbow under the right shoulder, slide your legs out long, find your side lying Tadasana. Either use left hand like a kickstand or left hand can come to your left outer leg if you feel well balanced. Push your right arm down, elongate the right side waist. This is one of my favorite things, it's so simple. There's so much length and support. Lift your left leg up, turn your left toes up toward the ceiling, and then bend the knee and pull your left foot in to the tree shape. You can keep a hold of your left ankle with your left hand. Move your left arm back a little bit against your leg. That'll help open the inner line of the leg more. And at the same time, push your right elbow down Keep that extension on the right side. And pick your foot up. Step your left foot to the floor. So your toes are pointing in the same direction as your face. You catch a little pigeon action. You can use your left arm like a lever to push your leg slightly away from you. Change to slide your right arm long, head in the hand, and then sweep your left leg behind you. Catch your ankle or foot with your left hand. Again, if you're wobbling, pull your right knee out in front of you, and then squeeze your left heel to your sitting bone. Roll your left shoulder back and take your left knee back any amount. Okay, let's release left leg meets the right. This time in transition, let's roll onto our bellies. Rest your forehead on the mat. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Press your pelvis down. Lift your head up, chin up, chest up. Bhujangasana, cobra pose. Pull your elbows toward one another. Squeeze your shoulder blades in. And draw your navel to your spine, and then hover your hands above your mat. Really turn your upper back muscles on. Squeeze the elbows together. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Release, forehead to the mat. Come up again, head, chin, chest. Oh, cobra pose. Pin your pelvis down. Float your hands up to hover. And now lift your right leg up. Spread your right toes. Squeeze through your right glute and your right hamstring to lift your leg up higher. Stay lifted, lower your right leg down. Squeeze your left leg and lift your left leg up. Spread your left toes. Firm left hamstrings, glutes. Place your left foot down. And release hands down, head down, pause. Belly down, Shavasana. Let's put all those things together. So point your toes. Press your pelvis down. Head, chin, chest, cobra pose. Squeeze your elbows together, shoulder blades together, hover your hands, and then point your toes, lift both legs up. Cobra pose, locust pose, a hybrid. Firm the back of your body to lift the front of your body. Release, rest your forehead on the mat.
When you're ready, curl your toes under, press yourself up through your hands and your knees, and then set yourself up for a child's pose. You can take your knees wide or your knees together. Rest your forehead on the mat. Or if it doesn't come to the mat, you could make a setup with your hands that lifts the floor up to you. Make sure your teeth aren't clenching so soft through the jaw, tongue, throat. Few more breaths here. And then we'll lift up to sit. And if you're comfortable sitting on your heels, you can continue with that. That's a very challenging position for many in the ankles and the knees. So, so you could also transition to a cross-legged seat. So just sit in a way that you can be comfortable with a nice tall spine. Take your arms out in front of you, cross your right elbow over your left elbow. Then take the backs of your arms toward one another. This could be the end of the line for you. You might be somewhere like here, or if you can get the backs of your arms together, you can slip your palms together. And then pull your right arm to the right and your left arm to the left. And hopefully you'll get spreading, lengthening, releasing sensation in your upper back, neck, maybe even in the front of your chest. You can take your left ear towards your left shoulder. Stretch the right side of your neck. Bring your head back up, undo your arms, stretch your arms out in front of you, cross your left arm over your right arm, take the backs of your arms in, maybe slip the palms together. And then again, we pull the arms against one another. So the right arm pulls right, the left arm pulls left. And then you can take your right ear toward your right shoulder Stretch the left side of your neck. Okay, come on back through the center, undo your arm. Sweep your arms behind you, interlace your fingers, take your knuckles right to the back of your pelvis, and then squeeze your elbows together. Lift through the chest. Keep your head right in line with your spine, and maybe you can extend your arms straight or straighter behind you. If that, if that lends toward rolling forward, then just keep your knuckles on your pelvis. But if you can keep your spine upright, with the hands squeezing in and the arms extending, then you go for it. Try not to hard set your jaw or your tongue or your eyes. And then release through your arms. And if you're still comfortable here, we're gonna spend like one more minute seated or you can transition to a cross-legged seat. Rest your hands on your legs, close your eyes. Feel your heart rate.
Feel your breath rhythm. Sense the quality of your mental, emotional, spiritual self. More subtle aspects. And then let's meet our hands together at heart center. May the teachings of yoga lead us toward a place of ease in our body, in our hearts, and in our minds. Namaste.